Welcome back to Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at the Fairfield Circuitry, Roger That. I, I like to pride myself on this channel being something of a video manual for people who don't want to read the manual. Uh, I like doing these long form videos where I kind of feel like I can really get to the heart of what makes a pedal tick and explain that in a way that makes sense to people where they feel like they can come away with it, owning or not owning the pedal with a strong sense of what the control scheme is, what's going on under the hood, uh, and what the use cases are. This video is going to struggle to accomplish that. Uh, and that's because we are talking today about the Roger That from Fairfield Circuitry, a pedal that does things. So I guess let's try to like dial back to what this is in principle or on paper. The Roger That is a JFET drive slash FM modulator and D modulator. The idea behind it is that it's kind of leaning on the way in which uh, radio frequencies can kind of degrade uh, and kind of become static uh, as you tune away from your kind of desired signal uh, applied to an overdrive-ish pedal from Fairfield Circuitry. And if all that feels kind of vaguely incoherent and strange, uh, I have three things to say on that matter. One, you are in the right place because it does to me too. Uh, two, despite not really understanding what's happening here, uh, it's really interesting and with patience becomes something incredibly unique and wonderful. And three would be, uh, my inclination is to tell you to go watch uh, some videos on this from some more modular leaning people. Uh, I think Matt Lowry is doing a video on this and I highly recommend you go check out his channel uh, because he, in my opinion, in, in my estimation, is a much more intelligent person than I am. And his kind of wider instrument base will probably lend itself towards an, a better understanding of the specific parameters and intentions behind the Roger That. But while you're here, let's go ahead and talk through my experience with this, uh, what my impression on the control scheme is, what my use cases are, and kind of who this would be for. Because if ever there was a pedal that I could say definitively is not for everybody, this is that pedal. So the control scheme on this thing is effectively dry, wet, drive, shift, tune, a range control, and a filter control. Uh, what's happening inside this pedal is effectively you have a wet and a dry signal that are uh, out of polarity with one another. Uh, they are both kind of like heavily interactive with one another, which is interesting, made more interesting by the fact that the dry control is a little bit of a misnomer in that it is still affected by that drive control as well, which means you can zero out your wet and use this thing as a really interesting and cool overdrive pedal. Now that would be underselling what this thing does, and if that's what you're looking for, I would maybe recommend checking out Fairfield's Barbershop Overdrive, which I've done a video on on this channel, uh, link in the description, get that self promo going. Uh, but where this thing gets way more interesting is, in my opinion at least, in the more conventional senses, is when you start to introduce that wet signal in parallel with your dry. Now that wet signal is going to be developed and shaped and, and entirely defined by the controls around it. You have your filter, your range, your shift, and your tune. Your tune and your shift are almost like highly dependent on each other versions of the same control. Think of it as kind of like we were saying, tuning a radio a little bit, where you'll find clean spots amidst the chaos. But what's interesting is because you have that shift control and that tune control, you actually have the ability to find a safe space in there with some, with some clarity and some clean tone. And then you can then further mangle or demangle it with that shift control up above. That shift control is interesting because sometimes it functions as kind of an extension of tune. Sometimes it functions more as a filter control, uh, like low passing out some of the squealy or chaos that happens in this thing. But on that intro you heard, a lot of that sound design stuff happening around the song was literally just tweaking tune and shift together. My tuner was on, I had no guitar audio passing through. That was all audio developed internally, noise, crackles, pops, dragging self-oscillation textures coming from tune and shift controls. 
And then when the guitars come in, that is a combination of the JFET drive in this thing, as well as the tune and shift controls being very, very specifically set and blended in at the right levels to create anywhere from a little bit of added texture and grit and, and, and kind of interest in that drive, all the way up to kind of that initial lead part that you heard, which almost felt like it had a broken, I don't know if it almost felt like a ring mod meets uh, kind of like whip fast, like vibrato modulation, like something really stuttery and clicky, but blended in, in that interesting kind of phase dependent place to create a really bizarre, I don't know that I could replicate it with any other pedal style drive texture. Uh, I say not sure if I could replicate it with any other pedal. I'm honestly not sure I could replicate it with this pedal if I didn't take a photo of what my settings were. This thing is that specific. It's that uh, nuanced, that that finicky. It's, it's fascinating. This is something that rewards patience and curiosity. If you're somebody who wants a pedal that kind of feels like easy, quick texture or easy, quick overdrive, there are a bunch of amazing options inside of and outside of the Fairfield line. And I have a feeling that if you're one of those people who wants all knobs at noon, plug and play accessibility, this is not something that you're going to have a good time with. I think it's important to talk about the investment necessary in something like this because there is going to be a lot of initial frustration. My day one with this pedal was rife with me getting frustrated and annoyed and kind of going, I don't know if I can make this video. I don't know if this is something that I think I will be able to represent in a way that makes coherent sense or that I'm even going to be able to get sounds that I really like and appreciate out of it. And then day two came and that's where that intro song came from. Something clicked where I kind of realized I had to slow down and be really patient with, okay, let's get those tune and shift controls just so, let's get that wet mix in just so. But with that patience and that curiosity and that kind of slow meticulous approach uh, results in is some sounds in a singular box that I cannot get with anything in my studio with my wall of like, I don't know, 170 plus pedals. I'm not sure I could blend things together in here to accomplish what this thing does on its own. Would I use this live? Probably not, it's finicky. And if I accidentally kicked that shift control a micron to the side, I would lose the sound that I had. But if you are like me and you spend most of your time in studio or in home playing, dialing sounds, writing music with kind of the ability to be patient with the, with the tools you have at your disposal. This thing will thank you in turn for the time you spend with it. It is fascinating. It is the strangest thing I think we've covered on this channel. And in a way, it's kind of the most interesting. So we're gonna go to our sound samples now. We're gonna start by looking at that drive control and that dry tone. And then we're very quickly just gonna devolve into kind of formless, strange uh, knob twisting and switch flipping to try to get to the bottom of what is available in this. Because like I said, I don't think that it makes sense to go knob by knob because they're so heavily interdependent on one another. So, um, I don't know if any of this is actually useful beyond the sounds themselves. So I apologize for talking this long. Let's take a look at that pedal board and let's really, really try to see how much we can unravel about the Roger that. As always, before we jump into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Jennings Voyager with McNelly Chaplin humbuckers into the Bondi FX 2026 compressor, the Benson Germanium Boost, the Electronic Audio Experiments Limelight, and the Fairfield Circuitry Roger That. From there we go to the Chase Bliss Gravitas, the Stratman Timeline, and Big Sky. From there we go to our amplifiers, which are the Universal Audio, Ruby, and Dream. Guitar directly into a small plate reverb, and our amps sounds like this. So let's go ahead and start things off pretty simple. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of strangeness and complication in this pedal, but I want to start things off relatively straightforward and with a decent amount of like 
uh, adaptability. So we're going to start really, really simple with just our dry and our drive controls. And then we'll kind of start to work our way into some of the weirder stuff because um, the dry control is a little bit of a misnomer where, yes, you've got your dry, but it is affected by that drive control still, which I think is a great choice because I don't like squeaky clean, dry electric guitar alongside affected electric guitar like that. I don't think it sounds great. So I'm really glad that this is the arrangement they've gone with, but it also allows us to kind of listen to this thing as a more conventional drive pedal. So let's listen to the kind of range of drive this thing offers us. <laughs> What's fascinating is it stays pretty articulate and pretty like touch sensitive, even with our drive at max, like you hear that kind of like wall of sound. However, There's like a decent, not a decent, there's a really good drive in there, especially with something boosting it in front, like the Benson Germanium boost. Let's take that dry control out. Let's take our drive to about noon and uh, let's introduce the weird side of this thing. Let's introduce that wet control. What's, wor what's worth noting right off the bat is wet and dry are out of phase with each other uh, by design. So you will actually get some very strange interaction, even with that tune and shift down, so that wet kind of feels mostly dry. Yeah, there's a lot of very strange, somewhat unpredictable interplay in this pedal between the various controls. We're on that wet control. Let's go ahead with the range in the one position and the uh, filter turned off, the voice filter turned off. Let's go ahead, leave the tune at zero right now and kind of give, because I, I would argue that tune at the bottom here is one of the more normal positions. You take this thing anywhere in the middle and you get craziness. So let's leave it at the bottom and let's kind of just like slow roll that shift through while playing. And then we'll start to kind of play with the interplay here. This isn't gonna be a like examine every spot here, then examine every spot here because these ultimately are just two sides of the same very chaotic coin. <laughs> you.
it gets weird real quick. Uh, so in some positions over here, this will operate mostly as a filter control, but not always. <laughs> However, if I'm not playing, I can actually get it all the way there. Oh, and there it goes again. This is the game with the Roger that. So now, with, with that bearing in mind, let's go ahead and just start playing with these two. And then we'll bring that filter voice in uh, a little bit. And then we'll kind of take a brief look at the really chaotic extended range of that tune control. You'll notice there's a lot of touch responsive chaos in this thing as well. Okay, so I don't remember any of the settings from the intro song because it's all too chaotic, uh, but I do remember that this is similar to part one of the guitar parts on that intro, bringing in enough of that dry to kind of keep it sounding at least remotely like guitar, but allowing that white, kind of white noise to, inter to kind of interject on its behalf as well. So again, let's take that 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 dry back up. So pretty normal. So as previously stated, uh, there's a lot to wade through in this thing for some really cool moments of hard to find but worthwhile clarity. Let's bring in that uh, voice control because I think it does a lot of like heavy lifting for this combination. See, now we're getting a kind of like well-designed bit of melodic chaos in there. So let's bring that down and build like a really cool 
our dry guitar tone. that wet. And with that wet thrown in. A really, really cool, unique, high texture drive. Some of my favorite weird stuff as well with this thing is going to be. Something like that, kind of like wide panned, full wet delay, and then just using just the wet side with that tune and shift controls to create interesting like digital artifacted sound design stuff. Yeah, you cut a lot of that on the uh, on the intro track. Just interesting, weird, kind of experimental sound design stuff thrown on top of a more conventional track can be a really interesting sound design tool to create some like very bizarre moments and and little kind of like textures and and some kind of like some some icing on the cake of of, of your of your production. Okay, let's jump back and let's give that tune and shift control one more pass. With we'll turn the drive down a little bit for a second. Uh, with that extended range, because this is where this thing gets very strange. So in normal mode, your bottom and your top are gonna be a little bit more conventional. Or at the very least a little less chaotic. In mode two, Thank <laughs> you. 